Okay, fight fans, fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. Let's get started. Okay, so first up, congratulations are due. Congratulations, Jonathan DeBella, on having a successful pro kickboxing debut all the way in Brooklyn, New York, last Friday. If you weren't lucky enough to stream it, it is going to replay on CBS Sports this week, so make sure you follow along closely to my Twitter and Facebook. I'll be throwing up the links so you guys can watch that. A terrific KO and a beautiful debut. I predicted it, and I've been saying it for a while. This kid, and I call him this, he is the future. Make sure you check out the Fight City article we did on him. He is just a bright and talented star. Make sure to check it out. Now, as far as what's going on on the FightCity.com and in and around the city, there is plenty to talk about. It is Fight Week and everybody knows it. So first off, Friday night, brought to you by Ritza Promotions and Grand Brother Boxing, a terrific night of pro boxing at La Tahu, just off of the 40 or the Metropolitan, Look for a giant cylinder building. That's right. It's a Gladiators Arena. It is going to be their second or third time there. It is now the home of fighting. Make sure to come and support. Hopefully, there will still be some tickets left. There will be some replays on the oncoming months from uh, RDS2, who is there to film it. However, if you want to see a great night of live fights, this is the only way to go. The tickets are not expensive. It's a great stack card. Here are a few reasons I strongly suggest you go. First off, Dwayne Durrell. Diamond Durrell. The kid is 3-0 and they call him Diamond because he shines. It's just a fantastic example of what hard work and etiquette will do to polish up somebody's technique. This kid uh, went leaps and bounds from when he started off doing fantastic work in the gym, look forward to his fight, Dwayne Diamond Durrell. Now in the welterweights, 3-0, Bruno Bradishian, I call him Wyatt Earp, you can call him the young gun, this kid is just something to look forward to, uh, he's showing all kinds of promise and I look forward to him progressing his career, he comes out of Luce Butte's camp, trains with the Grant Brothers, He's got a fantastic pedigree. The kid's just fun to watch. Look out for Bruno Bredician. Next up in the super featherweights, none other than Manitas de Oro, Golden Garcia. I call him Ojos Locos. The kid is just unrelenting. It is beautiful to watch. Work ethic for days. He is a mini Duran. He is a throwback fighter. He's 5-0 and, oh, and for good reason. Look out for Golden Garcia. Next up, the heavyweights are in the ring. I look forward to this one. There's a young prospect from Toronto with Ukrainian roots. Wait, I'm gonna look to make sure I don't mess up the kid's name. Alexander Teslenko is 4-0 with three knockouts. He's 25 years old and like I said, from Toronto. I don't know much more about him, but he's an undefeated young heavyweight. Need I say more? Next up, in the lightweights again, Rudy Pierre-Paul, Rudy Rue, the pop-up king. I call him that because he's over here, and then he's over here, and then he's over here. It's very hard for me to keep track of uh, as far as me taking pictures goes. And uh, I know he just gives hell to all the guys that spar him. He has uh, definitely made guys work on their footwork. He's fun to watch. 12-3, and three, the kid is experienced. He's got a serious card behind him. Look out for him. He is also very flamboyant in there, so look for something very spectacular. He's fighting a very tough Mexican. However, I do see this going uh, the distance. It will be a very fun fight. Look out for Rudy Pierre-Paul. Next up, undefeated young prospect, Eric Bazo Bazinian. This Canadian-Armenian prospect is the pride and joy of the Grant Brothers gym. He is uh, making a lot of boxing promoters talk. He is now recently co-signed to Rixa Promotions and Group Yvon Michel. He is a young, talented star. I mean, he's 12-0 with 8 KOs. 
the kid's just fun to watch. His amateur record just shines of professionalism. He's very young, but I've said it a million times. He is so damn mature in the ring. Honestly, he is the closest thing I think we have right now at the moment to getting a world title in that stable. I look forward to watching this kid fight every single time. Make sure you check out for all business, Eric Bazinian. Last but not least, the main event, the main course, my reason for being, the reason I love this group. Francis Lafreniere is the epitome of a fighter's fighter. If you like boxing, you love Francis Lafreniere. I call him the people's champ, the last boy scout, the chairman of the ring, the blue-eyed devil. Ladies and gentlemen, Francis Lafreniere does not have a record that most people like to talk about. However, he is the CPBC Canadian middleweight champ. He is the IBF international IBF champ. And now we're going to be fighting for a third title, the IBF Intercontinental title. That's three titles. There's only one other man in the history of Canada that's ever done that, and that's Lennox Lewis. Not bad for a little kid from St. Clair. This kid is bred. To know him is to love him. To watch him fight is to admire him. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't do anything this weekend other than watching this fight, you are causing yourself a great disservice. It is a morale booster. It is a spectacle. It is everything boxing embodies. Every time that kid steps into the ring, everybody should support him. I'm saddened that he's not in the Bell Center so that 20,000 of you could get to watch this kid fight. If you don't know what I'm talking about, trust me, there's YouTube videos out there. Francis Lafreniere. And it's no joke. Because they got him facing a 29-year-old Colombian who's got 33 wins with 24 knockouts. He is a serious kid. And this is a serious title. And when I say serious title, people like to throw that around a lot. I'm going to say this to you. Two months ago, Matthew Macklin, that's right, the hard-hitting Matthew Macklin, the one that boxing writers all around the world talk about, lost that title. Well, technically, he won it in the fight, but because he didn't make weight... They didn't give him the belt. So the belt was up to grabs and voila, Francis Lafreniere's big chance of making Canadian history. Who knows? Maybe it'll lead to a showdown with Matthew Macklin. I wish nothing but big things for this guy. And if you watch them fight, you would want that for him too. Francis Lafreniere, Grand Brothers Boxing at La Tahu. Go check it out on Facebook. Go look at their website. It's very easy. Call La Tahu. They'll sell you tickets. You can get tickets at the door if there's any left. Hell, come see me or hit me on Twitter. If the place is full, I'll sneak you in. It'll be worth it. So that's it for me this week. Make sure you check out thefightcity.com. Like and share all the pictures and videos and stuff I put up. I put up so much stuff, I forget I put it up. So make sure you go there and check it all out. Like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week.